Good morning, Spartans. Happy Thursday, May 26th. You can see the agenda listed below. Today you will, if you have not already, finish the Iranian hostage documentary and video guide and submit that. Uh, if you are not done with the video and the video guide, then you should stop this video, go finish that, get that submitted. That's, that's item number one. Next thing we'll do here, once you're done with the video and video guide, I'll run through the notes on Mustafa Kemal in Turkey, and then you have the rest of the time to begin working on questions one through 13 of chapter 30. Let me back this up. Remember, the first 13 questions are actually from chapter 29. So in the reading guide, you're gonna have to make sure you click on the right book and then go to the right page number. But on Tuesday next week, we're gonna start talking about the Chinese Civil War. So if you're not done with the video guide, go do that, get that submitted, then come back, reopen this perhaps, and then we can get the notes down before we go into the chapter 30 reading guide. All right, Mustafa Kemal and Turkey. Uh, here on the slide, you can see the extent of the Ottoman Empire that existed for the better part of 400, 400 well, well past 400 years, five, 600 years. Okay, you can see uh, the farthest extent of it. Uh, post World War One, after World War One, the Ottoman Empire was going to be stripped of all of these territories. The French were going to move into Northern Africa. Obviously, the British moved into Egypt and Palestine. While um, in the Mesopotamian region, the British and the French were going to go halfsies on the land there. Obviously, there was new countries created in the Balkans. The Russians got some territory on the north side of the Black Sea. Turkey, or sorry, the Ottoman Empire was largely going to be reduced to this region right here. That is a terrible color choice for that. Let's go with blue. Maybe this will be better. Turkey was going to be limited to this region right here. This is where it was going to be. That's the land that they were going to be restricted to. Uh, very similar to what would happen in Germany. Uh, the people in Turkey were not happy about this. Uh, and what, what did happen was a guy named Mustafa Kemal, uh, a successful military leader, continued to fight after, after the Ottomans accepted this peace, uh, peace deal. Um, after the Ottoman, uh, Ottoman Empire accepted the, the terms of the Allies, after World War I, Mustafa Kemal kept fighting. The Greeks were involved in this region, the British were involved in this region, the French were involved in this region, but Mustafa Kemal continued to fight. In fact, you know, your book tells you that World War I ends in 19, um, you know, 1918 and the peace deal is signed in 1919. Uh, technically true, the conflict still continues here. It may not be with the Ottoman Empire, but it definitely continues with a guy named Mustafa Kemal who wanted to drive out foreigners and protect as much of the historical land of the Ottoman Empire or the, the, the original Turkish land as possible. And it wouldn't be until 1923 that um, Europeans, the British, the French, the Greek uh, are pushed out of this region. Once those uh, allied countries are pushed out of Turkey, uh, Mustafa Kemal then goes after the Sultan uh, and, and more or less completes a coup, a coup d'etat uh, and takes control of the country installing himself as president or winning enough support of the people to win to win the presidency um, because you know he was arguing that you know the sultan allowed this to happen he wasn't the rightful ruler of turkey anymore because he allowed bad things to happen they lose the war they lose all their territory this dude's got to go when mustafa kemal comes to power uh very similar to the shah in iran uh he begins this um uh policy and program to modernize the country. Again, it's, it's a common thing here. Uh, the Russians are trying to modernize, uh, the Iranians are trying to modernize, the Turks will try to modernize. The Eastern half of the world is going to try to modernize because they were not modernized. Really the only one who was modernized in the Eastern part of the world was Japanese. They all go on the same path to catch up with the West who is an industrialized, modernized superpower. Um, the same happens in Turkey. But unlike in other parts of the world, especially in Iran, Iran eventually will become, will try to become secular. Um, because the Shah believed that, uh, Muhammad Shah Pahlavi um, argued that, you know, non-secular beliefs were holding them back. Um, Kemal, M Mustafa Kemal, 
uh, begins that secular component right away. Uh, he didn't want to have any sort of um, second guessing, uh, discreditation that, um, you know, science, industry, technology would be interfered with by religion. Um, he also wanted, you know, everyone, everyone participating. Why would you not, why would you want half of your society not participating in society, modernization, education? Why would you not want them working? Why would you not make them want them making money or spending money? Um, so he begins this kind of wide, um, widespread policy. Everyone's going to school. Everyone has freedom and liberty to an extent. Everyone has freedom and liberty. I mean, the guy is more or less a dictator. Um, there's going to be non-religious uh, education. Um, and they are going to, and it's kind of contradictory, as much as he wanted to drive out Westerners, he then brings all of their culture into their society. So non-religious clothing, European clothing, modernized clothing. Um, and then the government starts more or less doing what European governments were doing getting involved in the economy, managing certain industries, ensuring that people had what they needed to have a job to be able to improve their lives. So they felt like they had an opportunity, all of these things done to um, uh, grow and modernize. To this day, if you were to look at, if you were to look at all the Middle Eastern countries, Egypt, Israel, Lebanon, all of them, Turkey is largely the only secular country, meaning that their society is not governed by religion, while the rest of those countries are very heavily influenced, if not fully influenced and controlled by what their religion says. Turkey was, for a time, uh, a modernizing, um, relatively successful country. Obviously, they've gone through some coups, they've had some political instability, um, military overthrows and dictatorships that have ultimately held held them back from from reaching the original intent and goals of Mustafa Kemal. Uh, that is the information that I needed to cover with you today. Uh, I just want to point this out to you one more time. The chapter thirty reading guide. Oh, I don't know what happened there. I'll get that link fixed before. Um, let me go back this way. The chapter 30 reading guide in the assignments folder. There are two textbooks listed. Chapter 29, that is for questions one through 13. So the first question is your homework assignment today. You are going to use the first, the first textbook. The rest of the sections will be in chapter 30, all right? I'll get that link fixed so you don't freak out. Questions one through 13, you're gonna be using uh, chapter 29 textbook that's on the Chinese. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you had a good week. I will see you tomorrow if you are in the building. If not, enjoy your weekend and have a wonderful Memorial Day. Until I see you again, either in person or on video, go Spartans.